All right, so here we are at the computer and I got the thumb drive plugged in. Let's go ahead and open it up. So this is what we see. It looks like we have a couple PDFs and they are of the manual in digital form. And we can see here everything that's included, all the parts of the printer and what they're called. We've got the specifications here, how to use the printer and get started here and also the slicer, which we're about to do. So here we have another PDF in multilingual, which basically has more languages added here to it. So here we have a printing test file and that's the rook we printed which comes with the stl and also the goo file which is the sliced file and here we have another folder which appears to have more chess pieces that you could print if you want and for the last file we have the slicing software which includes the basic and the pro g2 box so the printer does come with a pro subscription there's a card in the box with a code but we're going to stick to the basic today and when we click on that we can see we have three different systems available linux mac and windows same thing for the pro i'm on mac so we're going to choose that so they have two different folders here for the Mac as one is for the older ones that still use Intel chips and then the one is for the new one which uses the ARM chip. So the one with the A here is the ARM and the one with the I is the Intel. So I still have the older Mac so I'm going to choose the I for Intel. So it's going to go ahead and install and open up here shortly. All right, so here we have a welcome to Cheetah Box. They have a little wizard here that you can go through, which will help you get started. I guess let's go ahead and do that real quick. So choose your language, we got English, next step. Choose the interface that you would like. So they got classic, light, and this one. I guess we'll try this new one out. And here we're gonna add the machine. And here we have the Mars 5 Ultra, finish. So it kind of wants us to go over here and make sure everything is correct. So we're just going to leave everything the way it is and not mess with anything. And you can see here we're under the machine settings. And we got resin here, print, and you can adjust your parameters and advance. Well, I guess it's all in one. It's just going through the different tabs. Okay, we're going to apply that. It's telling us here that make sure we have the latest update to our printer to work with this slicer. So let's just cancel that for now. And here we go. We can see our build plate. Very nice interface. I like the dark background. And it also shows us where the front is on the build plate, which is pretty awesome. So even if you can imagine this being upside down, you can still see where the front is. So let's go ahead and drag something in here like this Eiffel Tower. Right off the bat, we can see here we have a cavity detector saying that there needs to be a hole dug because there's a resin that will not flow out, I guess. But we should be fine, I think, with this tower as it's supposed to be printed the way it is. So we'll just turn that off. And we can see here we have two detectors, the cavity and the collision detector. And the collision one's happy. So. so we have all our basics here. We can move the model around by just clicking it or using the arrows or just putting in here with the measurements. We also reset it here, put on plate, centered. Here we have rotate, also same thing. We can rotate it here just by clicking the circles or doing it here in the interface. Here we have scale, which we can make it smaller or bigger in every direction, ratio locked, support diameter unchanged. But let's go ahead and click the scale to fit and that's just gonna maximize the model to fit on our build plate. So this is the maximum it can print. Yeah, it's not huge, obviously, but it is a reasonable amount, and it's giving us a Z of a maximum of 149.92, so 150. And down here, we can do more things to mirror the print. So on top here, we have files we can open, out to layout, hollow, dig hole. So if you want to make it the model hollow here, it kind of shows you the preview, or like dig a hole because you want to drain the resin, or just, you know, punch a hole or something. And we also have a repair button here to repair issues with the one. Here we have our navigation, where you can just kind of click on certain parts of the cube here we have layers for each one and there are 3,000 of them here which is quite a few so if we go back up here we can see we have a couple tabs we're on this first tab if we go to the second tab that's going to be actually our supports and it automatically here pulls up what kind of supports and to fine tune them so you can do all your supports from here. This model obviously does not require support, so, but if you click this out of support button here, it does a pretty good job of just automatically putting the supports where they're needed. But this is definitely, you know, a little more on the advanced side and takes a little time to learn how to use supports. But overall, the auto support button does a great job and you can delete and add supports manually here with these buttons. So, but we're gonna keep it pretty simple today and just do this Eiffel Tower. So if you're ready to slice, you're gonna click the slice button here and it's gonna slice the model. And here we can see our exposure time, 2.5 and bottom exposure is 32 seconds which is probably a little high because our other model was sticking too good. So let's make it 25 seconds. And we'll go a little faster of 2.2 seconds per a layer. 
that should be quite reasonable. So down here we can see we can save the file or network sending. So if our printer is connected to the network, we can send it here. But let's click on save and you guys can see that we'll be able to save this file straight to the computer. So we do have a couple choices here of GOO or CTB. Pretty sure we need GOO, so I'm gonna click on that. But it might be able to read both of those. So And this is gonna save it straight to our desktop. And from here we can actually put it on our thumb drive and then take it to the printer and print it out. And for whatever reason, it does take a while to save here. We're only at 30%, so I'm just gonna cancel that. Also show you guys here, you can send it by network. And to do that, we actually need to install some kind of G2Box manager. I guess let's go ahead and do that. And that looks like it's gonna take a while. All right, so we downloaded. It looks like there's a few steps here to go through. So we've got an introduction, continue, install software successful so theoretically should work now let's click on network sending i guess we need to allow here and yeah it's opening up a different window here and here looks like we can add a printer let's see add so it looks like you found this one here which is our mars 5 ultra all right so if we go to printer we can see it's on idle let's click on it here camera is connected it says so and there it goes we can actually see the vat there live and that's a separate window also, which is kind of cool, I guess. You can keep that open. And it's actually pretty clear, very high quality camera. All right, so we connected the printer. Let's go ahead and send it to this one here. And if we click on send, looks like it's uploading the file to the printer and it should start printing. Here we can see it's transferring, completed. And as simple as that, we sent the print to the printer. So here from the G2 manager, we can actually, let's see, see the files internal storage and there's our Eiffel Tower and we can print it from here so it does require a little bit of clicking around and getting it to work so if we click here on print it's gonna say our time lapse is off actually we'll go ahead and turn it on here and click on print making sure that everything is good to go we'll click continue and the print actually started I can hear the printers doing things and I guess we can open up our camera here and there we can see the build plate is actually moving around so my lighting is probably not too optimal there for the camera as it's very bright up front and dark on the backside. But still very, very good picture there or live feed. And there it goes. Pretty awesome. And that's basically the G2 Slicer here with G2 Manager to access the printer through the network. And if we click here, we can see we open more details here of what's happening it says it's printing zero percent and it looks like we are on our first layer there so yeah very nice slicer it's not super quick on my computer as it's a bit laggy it's probably because of the intel processor and whatever software they're using but overall very polished and a great experience here